this week you know we are going to focus particularly on vibration measurements and uh, monitoring and towards the last two lectures we will be discussing about basics of noise, sound, acoustics and a little bit about noise control. Uh, last week I uh, had given you an overview of the transducers used in condition based maintenance or monitoring and in this class today we will be focusing mostly on accelerometers. As you all know by now accelerometers are a transducer which is used to measure vibration and by now we know that 70 percent of CBM is actually through vibration monitoring. But fundamentally you know vibration can be represented either as displacement or velocity or acceleration. Okay. But then a fundamental question always which has been asked to me is you know what should I measure when I am asked to measure vibration should I measure displacement, should I measure velocity, should I measure acceleration. I will give you a simple reason why and how. Imagine a displacement x t given as a sin omega t, the velocity x dot t is nothing but a omega cosine omega t and the acceleration is nothing but a minus a omega square sin omega t. So, if you look at the amplitudes of these three quantities as the frequency increases the magnitude of acceleration is very very high omega square and the displacement is particular practic practically independent of frequency amplitude a. So, definitely at high frequencies we need to measure acceleration and at low frequencies we need to measure displacements and intermediate it is intermediate frequencies we need to measure velocity. Now, there are many standards which exist which use velocity as a parameter. Okay. So, many of the measurements have to be reported in velocity. However, if I measure a quantity by acceleration you already know about now if I divide it by omega I get the velocity amplitude. So, by measuring acceleration and dividing it by the frequency omega I can get the displacement the velocity amplitude x dot t. Okay. So, if I was to measure vibrations either at high frequencies or intermediate frequencies in terms of acceleration I can get either acceleration or velocity as the case may be. So, there are transducers to measure acceleration and velocity this is what we will be discussing and mostly for measuring accelerometers it is the piezo electric accelerometer and for velocity there is this moving coil transducer but then when I am talking about accelerometers I must also tell you how to measure displacements. You recall that I just mentioned that for low frequencies or for imagine this is a shaft which is rotating okay, and it is supported on bearings. Imagine 
imagine this was the end of a large turbine so if this turbine shaft is concentric in the casing this distance which is known as the radial clearance or the gap has to be a constant at all the positions 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Okay. So, imagine if you are installing such a turbine at one end, if you are to measure this displacements ok this has to be a constant value so how can you measure that i can put a sensor here displacement sensor which will just measure this gap so usually if it is a small movement even you know if this clearance is very very small we are talking about a very very precision measurement like say the displacement in the race of a ball bearing okay i could be having what is known as a dial gauge okay or a filler gauge to measure the displacement so, all you do is you measure in all the radial directions and they have to be same. We can do this because the event is slow. Imagine if you think of a mechanical device or like an LVDT is another device. Okay. So, all these devices are have low frequency response. So, the phenomena itself is slowly moving, I can use such transducers be it a dial gauge or an LVDT to measure the displacement and they have to be equal. So, if I was to give you an overview, some of the contact type transducers which are used are the piezoelectric accelerometers. So, I can measure the acceleration. I can divide it by omega and get the velocity if it is necessary and to require the displacement I can measure using an LVDT, but we will come across many cases wherein I need not because if you see LVDT it will make it has to make a contact the stylus has to make a contact, but there will be scenarios wherein you are at a distance from the machine, large distance, another is high temperature on the surface, so these are scenarios wherein the contact type displacement or acceleration transducers cannot be used. So, there are certain laser based techniques like normal or rotational which is something which we will talk about and then of course, the eddy current proximity probe or the moving coil velocity pickup which are used to measure the velocities. So, coming specifically to the accelerometer piezoelectric accelerometer you will see here that in this piezoelectric accelerometer we have put a piezoelectric material or crystal which when is having a mechanical displacement or a force is applied it will produce a charge. Okay. So, either this piezoelectric crystal see piezoelectric crystals are found in nature 
or they can be artificially made also. They have the most sensitive direction of sensing. As you know, vibration is directional. Okay? So, if I have a vibration coming in this direction, I have to align this piezoelectric crystals in their most sensitive direction and then of course, you know put them in a housing like this, wherein they will give a charge which is proportional to the force which is being applied or even the displacement which is occurring because of the motion. Okay. Now, I will come to this charge a little bit later. Another thing I must tell you when I am talking about is accelerometers, the vice versa also works in the case of piezoelectric crystals. So, if I give them an electrical voltage, they will also have a mechanical deflection and that is what is used in what is known as this smart structures. Suppose, I put a piezoelectric crystal and give an electrical voltage, some voltage V. So, it is going to have a deflection. Imagine if this beam was vibrating or what is known as fluttering. I could put some piezo patches and give a proportional control voltage, which would suppose the deflection was in this direction. I will give a voltage which will give a force in this direction and thus reduce the fluttering. So, this is what is used in smart structures. This is something of course, we are not going to talk, but then there is a whole <coughs> domain of research which goes on in using piezoelectric crystal for developing smart structures, wherein I can control the movement of the mechanical structure like the piezo actuators. Okay. But in accelerometers which we are using, which are basically piezo sensors. Okay. So, this piezo sensors or piezo crystals are put in a housing. I will just go to the next slide and you will see. So, this is where the piezoelectric crystal is put. This is a mass spring system, wherein a piezoelectric crystal is embedded here and this is the surface which is flush or mounted or attached to the surface where I am going to measure the vibration. Suppose, this is my surface whose vibration needs to be measured. I can put a piezoelectric crystal type accelerometer and then all this is going to give is a proportional charge which is proportional to the displacement x dot t. So, this piezoelectric crystals which are here can be subject and this is a very hermetically sealed unit. So, the accelerometers which we see have actually this kind of sensing elements inside them and these are sealed while at manufacturing. So, all we will have is a cable. Okay. Now, as you know even if a cable moves around, okay, if a cable oscillates or vibrates, it will generate charge. Okay. So, one has to be very, very careful while using accelerometers to measure vibration. So, these cables, so that the cables if they are moving, they do not pick up the noise 
these are known as low tribo electric noise cable. They are special cable wherein the conductor is actually anchor, uh, anchored with lot of reinforcements. So, the cable itself does not whip around, no whipping. So, it is always a good practice when you lay a cable from an accelerometer, so that to get less noise, it is basically good to you know, strap it with some some fixed and this is the cable. Because my objective is to measure vibration in this direction and this charge should be only because of x double dot t and not because of any other extraneous noise because of the cable moving around and so on. So, as I told you in the last class, these are the typical views of a uniaxial piezoelectric accelerometer sensing in one direction with a top connector, this is a side connector and this is a triaxial accelerometer with three piezoelectric crystals aligned in three of their most sensitive directions. So, you get an idea of how big or how small this piezoelectric accelerometer is. But something regarding this charge, as you know, this charge which has been produced by this accelerometer will decay with time. Okay. Okay. So, immediately this charge has to be converted to voltage. So, this accelerometers require a charge to voltage converter and of course, uh, you can then have an amplifier. This is of course, the voltage amplifier and then you can convey voltage signals over cables. So, the requirement of this piezoelectric accelerometer is that we need to have a charge to voltage converter. Sometimes this charge to voltage converter is actually placed inside the casing. Okay. So, there is a small IC chip which is the converter and then the output here is actually voltage. Such converters or uh, such accelerometers require a 4 milli ampere current supply. Okay. So, the traditional name of some of this charge type accelerometers with an plus and charge to voltage converter inside them. This is a single unit have some traditional trade names like ICP, CCLD, piezotron, deltatron, isotron. So, in the market if you go to accelerometers which already have this IC chip built in, all you require is just a current supply. So, many of the signal conditioners today give you a 4 ampere a milli ampere power supply supply power current. Okay. 
and the advantage of this is you do not have to carry a separate charge to voltage preamplifier or power supply okay now what happens is this voltage which we have got can be straight away connected to a signal recording unit and then stored but there is a limitation because this ic chip is inside it there is a temperature limit okay this temperature limit can be high for charge type accelerometers today in the market they may go somewhere around 580 degrees celsius but the cceld accelerometers can go only up to 200 degrees celsius so for high temperature applications we require charge type accelerometers now coming to the displacement type uh, measurements we can have an eddy current proximity probe wherein we give a primary excitation voltage and because of this air gap or gap okay there will be a secondary voltage induced only thing that this has to be metallic and then we will get a proportional voltage which is because of this air gap and such eddy current proximity probes are used in tur turbines wherein we can use the relative uh, gap at different radial distances velocity pickup which is used to measure low frequency vibrations but they have a frequency limit from 10 to 1000 hertz is nothing but an electromagnetic coil and because of this velocity here i'll get a proportional voltage so if you look at all the operational range of vibration transducers if you look at the frequency range response here frequency range and the dynamic range the piezoelectric accelerometer in fact cover the entire domain of measurements wherein the low frequency measurements are done by eddy current proximity probe which again has a very low dynamic range and the velocity type transducers which have somewhere between 1000 to 2000 or little less than 2000 hertz of frequency response now if you go to the market to buy this accelerometers you will see such charts where this gives the frequency response of the accelerometers and some of the mounting methods by which the accelerometer can be adapted and of course there is an iso 2372 standard which we will discuss in the next class when we talk about vibration monitoring that how this is to be done and this is a view of the charge type amplifier wherein this is the accelerometer and this is the low noise triboelectric cable and wherein this charge amplifier actually has a charge to voltage converter and then an amplifier where i can amplify the voltage signal to transfer to a long distances and this is the vibration meter which you know by now so some of the methods by which this accelerometers can be mount we can have a magnetic base to the accelerometer for example if you have this accelerometer i can screw a magnet onto it but then this surface has to be of iron which would attract magnet so this is not possible on all surfaces another is i could tap a hole onto a surface and put a stud
So, you know, tapping a hole. But mind you, this surface has to be smooth, okay, so that this surface makes a nice contact with the base. So, usually a good idea is to always you know, clean the grease by some acetone and then have a sandpaper and then polish it and then you can put either a magnet or put a stud and sometimes even a thin layer of glue or wax or bees wax can be applied okay, to stick this accelerometer onto the surface and sometimes you can also have a handhold probe. Okay, and then you can be attaching it to any surface which you are measuring. So, this gives you a good idea and very quickly we can measure the locations. So, this is a typical accelerometer kit which is available when you buy from the market. So, this is the accelerometer with a side connector, this is the low noise triboelectric cable, this is the magnet, this is the beeswax and here if you see there will be some studs, some washers. Sometimes uh, to ensure that there is no electrical grounding of the signal uh, passing of the electrical current, we put a mica washer and this is the probe which can be attached to the accelerometer which is known as the handheld probe and they have given a tap to tap a hole after you drill it the surface, tap it and then put a uh, uh, then screw the stud and then mount the accelerometer. So, you will get typically uh, different types and of course, this is the this is known as a micro dot to BNC. So, usually the accelerometer cable connector are known as the micro dot connectors. Okay, and then the typical BNC connector is the cable end. So, a micro dot at one end and BNC mail at another end would be used to connect to any of your signal conditioning devices. And once you have the signal conditioner where there is a voltage signal, you can amplify it and go ahead. And this is the calibrator which we know about now. This gives an acceleration of 10 meters per second at 1000 radians per second. Okay. So, this is a typical view of an accelerometer being used to measure the vibration of a bearing rig. Okay. Uh, this here you can see an any axial accelerometer being put in a rig to measure the vibration. And this is again an industrial accelerometer which is heavy duty with a strong magnet along with a vibration meter. Uh, this is another type of velocity pickup which will come when we talk about the rotational speed measurements. I will uh, discuss about laser vibrometers in the subsequent classes regarding uh, laser based vibration measurements and uh, both for normal and uh, rotational vibration measurements in the next class. Thank you.